we have some more great news coming out of Canada. Uh, that is if you're a fan of living in dystopian hellscapes. So we take one step forward towards 1984 today as the Canadian government is now flirting with the creation of a CBDC. What does that stand for? A central bank digital currency. This is actually a story we broke in the National Telegraph last year. As last year in the budget, um, you know, the groundwork for a CBDC was laid out. And now the Bank of Canada is on board. So the government started it. The Bank of Canada is now holding consulta consultations until, I believe, June 17th, where you can go online, tell them your concerns, and blah, 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 blah. Now, a lot of you might not understand um, what the danger is. Or some of you hear digital money and you know exactly what it is. You might not know the difference between Bitcoin, which is decentralized and no one can manipulate, and a CBDC. Um, but for all intents and purposes, if you're angry at the CBDC, there's no need to know the difference. Um, CBDCs are sort of the doomsday scenario for the financial system if you like freedom. And this is part of an entire plan in Canada, or a, let's say, more of a pattern of different things. So a CBDC in a nutshell, what it is, it's a digital dollar that would be backed by the um, Canadian uh, bank. So you would tie a digital dollar to the standard Canadian dollar and you can transact in Canadian digital currency. And you say, okay, well, what's the problem with that? As long as it's secure and backed by the bank, um, you know, what could go wrong? Well, this creates a system, though, in which almost every transaction is on the grid, right? There's no ability to pay cash, uh, do anything sort of under the table, um, uh, you know, do things that are not tracked. And then the real problem is Canada is also very, very heavily tied into the ESG scores. And the ESG scores, the environment, social uh, views, and governance is, you know, it's a Western social credit system. That, that's all it is. It's a state-style so social credit system like they have in China. So in China, if your social credit system goes down, like you can't get on a train to leave uh, your different city, you can't go this, like you, you, your scores are ranked, uh, you know, the more um, communist uh, CCP, uh, you know, affiliated life you live, the higher it is, and you know, the better so civilian you are, the, the more you can buy. In Canada, though, what it, it looked like more is, for example, um, we all know that because of BS fake science studies, beef is bad for the environment. And the number one goal of Canadians is to do things that uh, sound like they're good for the environment. Fixing the environment, not so much. Sounding like we care about the environment to our upper middle class friends, yes, please. So beef, right? That's a big no-no to uh, you know the ESG people. Uh, I know we can go into the, the floss in the ESG and how it's tainted towards BlackRock oil, but Tesla is not any, whatever. The real thing here is how easy is it to info, enforce a, a weekly quota on meat, right? You live alone, um, you, are, you have a family of four, so your daily, you know, your weekly beef quotient is, you know, two and a half pounds. Uh, you know, you, we're not going to say you can't buy more beef, but if you buy more beef, if it's tied to a digital dollar on your ESG score, well, now the cost of each pound of beef uh, per over your two and a half pound limit might go up by you know 15 percent the next one 25 percent you know then after that 50 percent right so you can still buy beef right it just becomes insanely more expensive to disincentivize people. and it's to save the planet do you do you not love the planet right and if you have a CBDC tied to an ESG score, this just becomes infinitely easier to do because everything's digital, everything's tracked, all your purchases are tracked, and you want them to be tracked to put on the ESG score, and you want to use the ESG score to use a CBDC. And it will sound good, and a lot of Canadians will fall for it because a lot of them, uh, they'll hear, there'll be discounts on ESG. If you're good, if you have solar panels, you can save 17% on groceries. Yay! Yay! If you live an affluent, upper-middle-class lifestyle and you buy BS globalist green theme products, you can get a discount. Now, screw the poor who have to make you know decisions based on, on what's cheap and available and all that. They're not making good decisions. But we will ESG them and CBDC them into making the right decisions because the problem is the government doesn't have enough control over what people are buying. And if we just, uh, just get the government to help out those silly, silly poors, oh, the poors are so silly, I know. If we just have Justin Trudeau help them think their thoughts and make better choices, we'd save the planet. Now, the other side of this is they don't care about the planet, okay? This is purely about control. And we live in a country in which they freeze bank accounts without a court order, without a criminal record. Freeze your bank accounts. You honk the horn at the prime minister, frozen bank accounts. 
This makes it so much easier to do. This is just a turtle button. It cut out the middleman. It means the government can just do it. The Bank of Canada can do it, right? Because it's all online. You can just freeze it from any end, right? At least with the Freedom Convoy, when they froze the bank accounts, there was some accountability. Now, for the government, what I mean by this is it caused the end of the Emergency Act. Like, TD lost $8 billion in market share. People were just pulling their money out of Canada, taking their assets out of the country, and the banks were like, yo, st stop this now. Add in a CBDC tied to an ESG score, and they can make sure you don't, you can't transfer your assets out of the country. Like, they can freeze it, confiscate it, all to click of a button. So, this will be uh, marketed as safe because cryptos are so volatile um, that people losing money, we need a safer digital currency. Um, this will be, um, um, you know, more convenient. So convenient, you don't have to carry cash on you. It's so convenient, right? And then, you know, everything will track, so, you know, better security, right? But in, in, in reality, this is a major player, and it's an absolute necessity. If you want to install a totalitarian state in the modern world, a linchpin of this, a key pillar to a fascist, green, totalitarian, happy-go, rainbow fascism Canada is a CBDC. You cannot have a fascist, totalitarian state uh, without a CBDC. It's You need it to create the utopian Canada that Justin Trudeau has always dreamed of, and we are now one step closer to that as the Bank of Canada and the Liberal government are now on board. Um, this might be a reason if you're some PPC people to say, you know, vote Polyev because he's pretty strongly against all of this. I mean, I did ask him straight out if he was for CBDCs in, in the question period, and he was quite vociferous and, and, and knew the danger of them. So, you know, I, I get it. You might not like them, but he, here's another stark difference between them. So if they can get this passed before 2025, goodbye, Canada. Nice knowing you.